Hey guys, it's Rochelle with Amethyst Ascension, and today we are doing day 13 of the 78 Days of Tarot, and we will be discussing the Hanged Man, which is the number 12 in the Major Arcana, which in numerology breaks down to the number 3. Uh, the other cards in the deck, in the tarot, that are associated with the number 3 are the Empress, and the World, and the Hangman, of course, and the other threes and all of the other four suits. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Number three in the science of numerology represents an energy reflective of the utmost in artistry and creativity. Imagination and self-expression are emitted in the number three which lends a hand to the vibrational properties of spontaneity, enthusiasm, and optimism. Sorry about Sully. It is the number of the performer who consistently emanates extroverted energy of extravagance and indulgence. The three also represents the energy of what is known as the universal trinity or the holy trinity which holds significant symbolism within many areas and cultures of spirituality. This can be exemplified in many different concepts, such as conscious, unconscious, and superconscious, mind, body, and soul, birth, life, and death, father, son, and the Holy Ghost, mother, father, and child, past, present, and future. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have mentioned the universal law before, universal laws, excuse me, before, which are the unchangeable laws that govern the universe. In the law of three, it is explained that the number three is a law of balance and completion. Three creates a unit, as neither of the original two are more or less significant than the other. Each of the three portions of the whole now act not only for itself, but now for the ultimate benefit of the group. The number three also reflects the vibrational frequency of the Ascended Masters in the spirit realm. These beings were and are the miraculous prophets, teachers, and healers who once resided in human form. However, they became enlightened, transcending beyond physical human limitations. They're an inspiration to the seekers of spiritual growth and higher consciousness, offering guidance as they are needed. The number three reflects creativity, communication, and self-expression. It combines taking advantage of the physical, spiritual, and sense of action to service. In the physical, its energy is one of creative action. In the mental, its energy is one of both imagination and logical communication. And in the spiritual, it is about expressing your true colors of truth in order to assist humanity in all ways possible. The ultimate vibration of perfect balance. Now... The zodiac relationships to the number three. The third sign of the zodiac is Gemini, the twins. Gemini is a perfect representation of two sides to every story because it is all about balance and duality. Ruled by Mercury, Gemini reflects a love of exchange and highly enjoy expression of logical thought, as Mercury is the planet of communication. This astrological sign of equilibrium is composed of interaction, ideas, and the lower mind here on Earth. The twins are the reflection of being a flexible, while also giving off an energy of having split personalities that can adapt to any situation at hand. All this information I got off of WeMystic.com. You are looking at right now the um, card out of the Everyday Tarot, the Hanged Man. So I did get, let me move on to, now that astrology that I talked about was for the number three. There is a different astrology that's related to the hanged man itself, the tarot. And I'm getting this information from tarot and astrology from Corin Kenner, the book. The hanged man spends hours or even days suspended in a trance-like alternate reality. He is in perfect sync with Neptune, the planet of spiritual and psychic enlightenment. The hanged man consciousness transcends the physical, 
just as Neptune itself seems to escape the ordinary bounds of physics. After all, the planet is composed mostly of ethereal mist, ethereal mist and gases. It's a planet of dreamlike illusion, as well as an existence removed from the limitations of physical concerns. From the vantage point, mystical experiences come easily. Both Neptune and the Hanged Man are associated with fantasy, imagination, and visionary art. They are idealistic, sensitive, and exceptionally psychic. Okay, so there was more to read, but I wanted to um, continue on with some a couple other books. Um, the next one I'm going to be reading out of is Kitchen Table Tarot by Melissa Sanova. And it says, there are more than one religion that speaks of a, hanged, of a man hanged from a tree. Mithras in Roman mythology, Odin from Norse, Jesus in Christianity, and Osiris from Egypt. This card is often interpreted as representative of martyrdom, as several saints chose to be hung or crucified upside down rather than replicate the manner in which Jesus died. The more accurate word, other than martyr, would be sacrifice. In each of the cases, the self is sacrificed for the sake of humankind. The expression on the man's face is serene. His leg is tied and he looks like he could free himself if he wanted to. He doesn't want to. He's going into this willingly. Now this is from, this is showing a different um, card. As you can see, this one is crossed. And that's from uh, Cyril Marchetti's The Gilded Tarot. You see, he's got one leg crossed. Um, one of my friends recently shared this with me, remembering that surrender is an act of will. It is a choice to unclench one's fist and to hang oneself upside down and stay there. The hanged man is about potential rather than kinetic energy. It's healing, becoming prepared to act, observing. This isn't the stillness of one who is lazy or afraid. This is the stillness of someone collecting their resources and get re getting ready to act. When this card comes up in a reading, it's about release, letting go of all perceived control of your life and allowing the lessons to be absorbed. It's a good time for learning because soon he'll have to let himself down from the tree and face the new realities that surround him. He is truly suspended in the air and in time. Sometimes if you don't know what to do or where to go, the best thing to do is to just sit down. Let's say that my client is having a hard time. Hard time at work, at home, emotionally, physically, with family members, and in his relationship. This happens a lot. I call it dogpiling. One bad thing hits you, then another, and another, and the next thing you know, you're just covered in crap. I get to a lot of calls. I get a lot of calls from people when they're in the middle of a dog pile. They never ask about all the things that are going wrong at once. They only ask one question. Should I leave my relationship? Should I move? Or should I get a new job? They're looking for one thing to fix in order to change their whole lives. Sometimes it's hard to see the trees for the four for the forest if your whole life has gone weird it's very easy to scapegoat a part of your life and make that the problem i'm unhappy so i'll leave this relationship and everything will get better i've actually done this before the relationship ended and i will and i was still unhappy and stuck except now i was lonely too there doesn't seem to be a good answer really but the one that seems to be the most effective is this sit down Stop moving. You don't have to decide everything in your life right at this second. The world isn't going to stop spinning, nor will you turn to dust if you just sit down and be still for a second. If your life is exploding and all of the dust is flying around, you can't see things that clearly anyway. You could actually be a medical, it could be actually a medical issue, could seem like an intolerant partner, what could seem like jerk faces at work could actually be that they're feeling terrible, terribly vulnerable at the moment and really are taking things too seriously. This is a thing. Rather than going completely scorched earth on your life, the hangman encourages you to stop, rest, 
confirm that the decision that you're going to make is a good one and then move forward. I know that sometimes it's easier to point in one direction and say that this thing right here is ruining everything. Unfortunately, because we're people and we're fallible, we're often the ones who ruin it. Um, sorry, I had emotion. That's a word in Southern Missouri, ruined. <laughs> to have ruined a thing in the past. Through indecisiveness, inaction, not caring for ourselves properly, or putting our fingers in our ears and singing la la la, we set ourselves up for the dreaded dog pile. Let's try to be a little more self-aware and a lot kinder to ourselves, shall we? The thing to remember about dog piles is that if you're on the bottom, you don't get to move until everything else is gone. Might as well be productive with that still time, right? Okay, I like that. No non nonsense kind of information. Now, the next book I'm going to read out of is Holistic Tarot by Benabel Wen. And let's see, it says, The traditional theme of the hanged man is that of self-sacrifice. The mob has metaphorically hung the seeker because they do not approve of the seeker's beliefs or what the seeker has done. However, the message of the card is that the seeker is right. The seeker must trust him or her, him, herself. He or she has wisdom. The nimbus represents enlightenment, possessing knowledge that resonates with the divine, with the right, and with the good. The hanged man is also about seeing the same issues as others, but through a different perspective. The Hierophant is about an orthodox, conventional, institutionalized approach. In reverse, the Hierophant is about the unorthodox, unconventional approach, which will lead to the seeker's success and final glory. The Hermit is also about an unorthodox, unconventional approach, but one led in solitude. Here, the Hanged Man is about an approach by the seeker that offends, albeit unjustly and without good cause, the masses, and therefore the masses are persecuting the seeker. Yet the Nimbus reminds the seeker that the mob's approval is not needed. Furthermore, the towel cross formed by the legs of the hanged man indicates the balance between domination and slavery. I'm sorry, not domination, dominion <laughs> and slavery. Note the towel cross in the legs reemerging in Key 21, the world, suggesting that it is the hanged man who shall attain the fulfillment of the world card, not the mob. Thus, the appearance of the Hanged Man card in a reading is also an encouraging message to the seeker to hang in there. It is the seeker, not the mob, who is in the right. The Hanged Man may also indicate spiritual growth or an innate ability to prophecy. An end message here, although the mob has hung the seeker and condemned him to or, or her, ultimately the seeker must forgive. There is a component of grace to the card. The seeker must show grace to his or her condemners. The hanged man, hands are hidden. Okay, well, not in this card, but in um, the traditional Rider Waite or universal Rider Waite, I should say. The man's arms are hidden behind his back. Um, his ultimate offering to the world has yet to be seen. The archetype here is the wounded healer. Another yeah. word about the hanged man is that of the unsettling calm before a storm. Before the difficult and painful transitions indicated in key 13 death, the hanged man is a feeling of suspension, similar to the question that the fool represents. Will the seeker fall or fly? Sacrifice, though, is the final message. There is a greater good at stake, and it is the seeker who will make the sacrifice for that greater good. The element of water governs this card. Attributions. Um, associated with water represent the external forces at play in the seeker's situation. Yin energy is dominant. Very interesting. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just show you some of the different cards. This one, as I said, is the Cyril Marchetti's uh, Gilded Tarot. Let me change this around a little bit. 
There, is that better? And this one was the Everyday Witch Tarot. Let me get back a little bit. There you go. This one is the uh, Mermaid Tarot. This is the Druid Craft Tarot. This is the Universal Rider Weight. You can see the one cross leg and the arms behind the back. This is from uh, Journey into the Hidden Realm. This is the Shadowscapes. A little bit different. This is the Good Tarot. This is the Angel Tarot. This is the Psychic Tarot. Now I'm going to put back what I started with, which was the Everyday Witch. I'm just going to read out of that one. I like to at least read out of one of the books. And this just happens to be my favorite. I love the Everyday Witch. Okay. It says, just because you haven't moved in ages doesn't mean that you're stuck. Oh, wait. Yes, it does. <laughs> A witch hangs upside down from a broom that stretches across... Oh, Across the top of the card. Sorry about that. Sully just going crazy as usual. Uh, there are chains around the witch's feet and hands with big locks on them. Houdini-like. Tucked in one hand. Barely visible but glowing to catch attention is the key to the locks. The mood is one of being stuck in limbo but with the possibility of a solution right before your eyes. Ever feel like you are completely stuck, unable to move in any direction? Then you will sympathize sympathize with this poor witch who is clearly in a similar situation he's in limbo caught between time and space not going anywhere anytime soon and there's nothing that he can do about it or is there if you look closely you will see that he has the key that will unlock his bonds he only has to figure out how to get himself out of that uncomfortable position so that he can use it maybe it is time to look at things from a different point of view than usual Luckily, that should be easy to do since he is already hanging upside down. Things to consider with this card. No one is ever truly stuck, but there are definitely times when it feels like it. The hanged man shows up in a reading to remind us that if we have hit the wall, sometimes the only way out is to go over or around instead of through. That may require that you stop banging your head against it long enough to figure out a completely different approach but clearly whatever you've been doing hasn't been working where in your life are you stuck try looking at the situation from a new angle or with a better attitude you can do something to get yourself unstuck or you can simply accept that you are stuck right now and see if there are any benefits to be had from simply hanging around for a while <laughs> okay so just to give you my two cents, I mean, I think it's all been covered clearly, but if you do get the hanged man, obviously it depends on whether or not you read in reverse or whether you read it upside or, you know, a regular side up and I don't read in reverse. Not sure I ever will, but at this point I'm not. Um, it would depend on where it falls, if it's pertaining to you or somebody else, um, the cards that are around it. But it would indicate sacrifice. But self-sacrifice. Taking the time out. Maybe just stepping back for a little bit. Maybe like in my situation. If your credit cards are out of control. If I get the hangman it's saying okay. Maybe it's time to actually take the, the cards out of your wallet. And don't use them. <laughs> and you know. That's exactly what we're doing. We're just cutting back. We're sacrificing all of those fun shopping days 
because we know that we have to take a step back and, you know, reevaluate and, you know, make a budget in order for things to work out better in the future. So that's what I see that the hanged man is all about. Just, and it doesn't have to be that. It can be, uh, you know, that's just an example. But I hope you have liked this video. If so, please give me a like. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And don't forget the little notification bell to receive notifications of future videos. And I'm wishing you guys always love and light.